himself getting patched by multiple cars, as I mentioned earlier on. So New off in a very precarious situation, but he often finds himself in these in these places to qualify as well as he races. Only the up front, they are sp getting with uh, Lee Aberdeen, Lee Aberdeen and Luca Verani, not very far apart at all here. But I just want to see how Halle Alistair Haig deals with Marcello Kessler coming around the old hairpin. decision they've ever made, just not having done that under the safety car really. Yeah, they're taking their pit stop strategy from Ferrari lately or something that's going on. In turn one, just too much gas on them, too much feet on the loud pedal, and approach he's dropped him all the way down the order, but Philip Hammer is eight out in front by an 8.91 seconds. Michael is a wall there, sir. Um, and it definitely doesn't want to be hitting that earlier on as well. Difficult the understeer is in the dirty air through that final corner because it's such a long corner and you get dragged off into the grass very easily. He'll have the slipstream down it towards the chicane. Peterson was briefly alongside, but that slipstream has saved him and kept him in third. Yeah, Verani now lost a little bit of time to Aberdeen, about half a second. Peterson is at Pike's pushed more and fell and up ahead. He's got out of line. It's now Pike could have a go at Werrell. Don't push him off. He's in the championship fight. Jack Werrell chasing down Carl Jacklin. Further down, Rob Williams and Chris Barnes. Sensational run outside line now, though, for the heavy braking zone. Around the outside goes the Audi R8. Look Whoa. how much Miller's caught back into play. Exactly. Miller's just such a trouble. He's got on second and change. All of a sudden, Miller's back in play. to the back end of Phil Jocelyn. So there's been a lot of movers and shakers in this first two laps here for race. Uh, absolutely serious racing league. Everybody's a lot of fun. Yeah. It's all um, about the entertainment. So I hope everybody is enjoying themselves out there in the chat. We know that Ron is at being enjoying himself oh, watching the Burger King machines off into the grass a little bit there as they're really bunching up now.
Does he have it? He's on the outside line though, going into the fastest corner on the circuit. Surely this can't work. Dominic Ligner has got a sensational run outside line now though for the heavy braking zone. Around the outside goes the Audi R8. Look Whoa. how much Miller's caught back into play. Exactly, Miller's just like Trump. He's not on second and change. All of a sudden Miller's back in play. Can Barry do it? Big Barry's gonna do it! Big Barry! Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome in to the JPB Clio Cup Season 5, Round 1, live from VIR North. I'm James Parfum, going to be joined in the booth by Nathan Richards here. After we ran what was Round 1 last week, we had a big old meeting, and then we have made some changes. And some of the changes we have made off the start is the schedule. We will now run a week alongside the officials. So we start here at VIR North. Um, the officials this week are at Laguna. As of tomorrow, we will run Laguna next week. Uh, Summit Point is the only change we made due to the fact I don't want to watch a nine and a half minute lap at Nordschleife in the Cleos for week three. OK, so don't kill me now. <laughs> I don't want to watch a nine and a half minute lap in the Cleos. It would be just desperately painful. So we've changed that to Summit Point 4. Uh, we're then going off to Oran Park GP, Winton Raceway, Hockenheim National A, Circuit de Ledenon, which, mind you, was the first time I'd been there before, and it was actually a really good track yesterday. Suzuka East Arena, Oshisleben, and then Donny Nationals. Places are still available. If you want to get yourselves involved, head over to jbbbroadcasting.com, and you can go and check it out as well. Welcome in, Phil, as always. Thank you so much. Yes, I did forget to put Nathan in the description, so I do apologize about that. <laughs> Kev, welcome in as well. And Lone B 17 good evening. Thanks for streaming. Good luck to the TX3, Jure, and De Costa. We've got 17 drivers here tonight, which is good as well. The numbers have gone up from last week. We've had, um, obviously, Dylan De Costa is obviously still here with Ludovic Jure. We've had Rob Williams is back. Uh, Stuart Gibbons has come over to the Clios from the GT4s. David Clasper is also joined us as well. So we've got quite a full grid here this evening. But let's bring Nathan into the booth as we head into qualifying. Nathan, welcome in, buddy. How are you? I am doing very fine. Thanks um, for asking, James. I'm quite excited to see how this um, season can go. Obviously, you know, these Cleos, we was here last week doing a bit of commentary around this circuit. And, you know, we can have some quite brilliant racing. And also, to add, this track is it's not the easiest to navigate yourself around. So I think that's another good thing to see. We'll have a big differentiation. People, um, you know, being a little bit more in tune to the circuit. And obviously, with 17 drivers, again, we're battling it second and third races having those reverse grids it also makes it so you don't have people running away every single race and kind of you know just getting away with everything and having a big lead so yeah. i think yeah this championship could be rather interesting yeah i think it's going to be a good one and i think now we're obviously alongside officials so people can get themselves involved they can race in officials all week and then they come and can come and race in this with us on the monday and do some league racing times are going to start coming through very very quickly john mchutchinson has got time on the board on a 139.568 so he is absolutely rapid at the moment with john mchutchinson we've gone away from the pro and ams after last week where we've seen multiple drivers who have got opportunities to win we have completely gone from pro and ams some of the other changes we've changed the score system as well we're now following the irl score system in the clio renault clio series or super series i think it's called so they will get 50 for a win and then it will go down 42 the second 36 the third 33 for four 30 27 24 22, 20, 18, 16, 14, 12, 10, 8, 6, 4, 2, 3, and 1. There will be um, a position for pole in race 1, and the fastest lap in each race will also get a point for that one. So quite a lot of changes we've gone through this week. We don't normally follow the officials, but we have done to help get with the season and getting drivers in, and obviously the massive score system changes as well. So quite a lot's gone on this week in the Clio's, Nathan. It's been a very busy week. Yeah, of course. And I think, you know, for most drivers it should be fine, but some of them might be a little bit um, confused and just trying to get used to everything, obviously, with some of the big changes happening for this season of racing. But we can see, obviously, a lot of lap times coming through, some big improvements from many drivers, and Maxwell now leads 
the um, the qualifying grid we by nearly a second to um, Lewis in second. So we'll see um, how everyone else can get on, and hopefully they can try and challenge for that pole position. Obviously, of course, it's one point for pole. So you know, getting yourself one point at the start of the season is definitely something you would like indeed. And yeah, I think, I think this can be really, really interesting. As I said before, having that reverse grid means anyone really has the opportunity to, to win here. And if you had a bit of a bad qualifying, you can get yourself near the front in the other races and then try and fight for that win there. Yeah, and that's that's one of the reasons we've always done reverse grids is it basically makes it very interesting for everyone involved. And, and it doesn't just give the top guy at the front running away and you're seeing the same person at the front every single week. I think overall, you know, they've got a, lo a lot to contend with now. And, and some of the new ones or the younger ones, I should say, like Kian Palmer, he's young. My boy, Edward Parfit, he's only just turned 19. So it gives them experience as well. And we've got the, some of the more experienced ones with Dan Lewis and uh, David Clasper, Sam Van Ols, Ludovic Jure, John McCutcheon. They've got all of that opportunity to take a win. And I think that's why reverse grids are so good, because at the end of the day, it does make sure that they have um, can obviously do and get up the front for the period that they need to. Yeah, of course. And, you know, as you say, it gives drivers lots of different aspects and lots of different elements to work on and get involved in. And we can see there a few more laps being set on the board. I think Maxwell there having a slight improvement on his lap and also McCutchinson now into second with a 35.1. So still a half a second gap there between those two. As we can see, DaCosta there going to second, a tenth back from the pole position time. So still many people looking to fight for pole position here tonight. Obviously only 10 minutes to qualify. So it's also quite limited. You don't have time to make many mistakes. You have one mistake and that could be your qualifying pretty much over here. Yeah, you've got to go back. You know, they can go back to the pits. They can come back out again. So there's no fears from them being stuck in the pit lane. They're allowed to come back out and obviously make whatever changes. We've also gone to a fixed setup as well. So these guys have got fixed setups before it was open for last week. We are now fixed for this season on coming. These are all changes that have been voted by the drivers. We did put an announcement out in the Discord and said, look, we want to do this. We want to do that. How do you feel about it? And they all come back and said, fine, basically. So it is purely on driver skill. I think a fixed setup gives them a very level playing field. And I was speaking to Wayne Palmer, who does a lot of setups. And he basically just said, to be honest with you, James, there isn't a massive amount of difference between open and fixed in the clear. Mm hmm. Uh, I think I think having it fixed just gives that, you know, it, it doesn't really give anyone an advantage at all because, you know, there'll be some people in here that might not have time to drive too much and might not have time to practice and get set up. So it means they haven't got to worry, you know, and try and get something sorted before the race. They can just hop in the car, do a couple of test laps and get straight in towards that qualifying um, session and, of course, the three races. So I think, yeah, it also saves people a little bit of time if they all, you know, if they haven't got the time always to try and get themselves in tune for the race and get themselves the best set up. But we can still see many times coming through. Still only three minutes left to go here in this session. So we'll see the last couple of laps start to come through um, very, very shortly. And you can see that the gap between first down to P14 is still just under two seconds. So a brilliant close field so far. And obviously all it needs really is someone to make an improvement of a second. And they can move up maybe five or six positions here. Mm. That's the thing. They, they haven't got to, you know, make a massive gain on time and I, and I think this is where we're going to see some surprises I think we have everything going on with the changes they've all embraced really well I think we could be in for quite an interesting evening and, and quite a well a very eventful evening we did the top split mm -hmm. officials on Wednesday for Kevin Hanfield who's the community manager at um, iRacing for the Clio's and that was a really weird one actually because they only split into 15s it was like 45 i think it was if, yeah. if kev's here can let me know i think it was 45 sign ups and then they split it into three heats and we only had 15 in each heat rather than doing like 23 and 22 which i thought they might have done they didn't so technically we're running at the same amount of cars as the officials are and um well hopefully We'll have a good one and they'll all love the changes that have come in with the point systems going to be changed. Luke Maxwell's got some purples on the board. He's just about to head down to the line. It's a, a little bit further down, Luke. You've got to keep going there, son. There he is as he goes over the line at 134.7. So no real improvements, even though there was purples on the board. Stuart Gibbons has rejoined us from the GT4s this season. He's come over to the Clios as well and um, come and got in there. He's part of the Blade Designs 
um, team. So him and Deck Crowver have teamed up. So I think overall we're in for a really good race. We've got about 50 seconds left before we get the first race underway. Don't forget there is still spaces available. Head over to jpbbroadcasting.com, click on League Racing and get yourselves involved. There's plenty of other leagues going on as well, mind you, not just this one. The GT4s are taking place. The Endurance is coming up. The NASCAR 100%, the NASCAR Truck Series is also kicking off as well at the beginning of May. End of, well, actually, it's more the end of April, actually. I think it's like April 30th. So that's all kicking off. So there's plenty going on over on the JBB Broadcasting website. So get yourselves involved in that one. There's also the Soggy Bottom Series, which is multiple variations of rain across iRacing in the Formula Ford with complete free content there within iRacing. So if you want to get yourself involved with that one, you can. And um, signups are all open. You can go and do whatever you need to do across the board. Five seconds to go before we bring the grid up. So Nathan... You know, apart from watching the top split the other day, you're now watching league racing. What do you think the difference going to be? Oh, I think the grid might be a bit more spread out, mightn't it? You know, there's, you know, it's not going to be the drivers at the top. It's going to be drivers from all over here in our race. And I think that's what makes it interesting because when we have that reverse grid, we might have some drivers that not aren't normally at the top, at the top. And we'll see what they can do and see how they can fight and keep ahead of some of those that might be a little bit quicker. Right, we're going to bring up the grid now for you. And this will be the grid for race one. Dylan Luke Maxwell, sorry, is on pole position with Dylan DaCosta in second. John McCutcheonson in third. David Clasper in fourth. Dan Lewis in fifth. Sam Van Ols in sixth. Vladovic Jure in seventh. Kian Palmer in eighth. Wayne Palmer ninth. Edward Parfit in tenth. Stuart Gibbons in eleventh with Carl Jacklett behind in twelfth. Deck Crowver in thirteenth. Paul God in fourteenth. Chris Barnes fifteenth. And Robert Williams there at the back end of the grid. But there is our very own Mr. Max well sitting at the front sitting pretty for the first race of this evening is he going to be able to go out and do what he did in the um, media well which was eventually the media day we, we renamed it after taking three wins out of three i did upset luke by changing it but <laughs> I, he did understand that because he thought he was going to be able to get a win in, in uh, three wins in the clears he had an absolutely barnstorming race in last week so um, i do apologize luke but the lights are out, and ladies and gentlemen, round one is up and running, and we are green, green, green. We have Luke Maxwell pulling down in that gold machine for Team Radline with Dylan DaCosta in the virtual driver's TX3 coming in second there as he's side by side for John McHutchinson going around the horseshoe. Is Dylan going to be able to hang it out? He's not. He's going to lose that place further back. There's still too wide, too deep with Wayne Palmer in there. He's alongside Kian Palmer, his son. So that's going to be an interesting fight. Father Son battle. Edward Parfit, Carl Jacklett as well, all scrapping it out and then further back. Oh, as there is a incident before we get going. That is unfortunately Carl Jacklett. I'm sure he will keep going, but it is Luke Maxwell taking the whole shot as they go running off through the snake and through the uphill into turn seven. Of course, I'm making it a one-two here for Radline at the moment. We can still see as well DaCosta looking to gain in and looking to try and get himself back into second position. We can see further back as well, Jure making a move ahead of Lewis for P4 as they head up in towards this next section of the circuit. And here, this circuit's very easy to follow through, but you can never really make a move with this part of the circuit, can you, James? No, you've just got to kind of follow. If you're going to go too wide, you're going to be a brave boy. Um, and that's the thing. You're going to be really, really brave to get through here. You're dropping down into the roller coaster of 14A. Round 15 you go, and then you've got to get it hooked in for the hog pen at turn 17. Very difficult to do, getting it hooked in here. It's a tough one. I've run this racetrack in the TCRs, and, well, let's just say it didn't go too well for me. But... There you go. I'm not no driver. Sam Van Olst in that uh, Goldwing Motorsports machine coming alongside Dan Lewis. He's looking at getting the grab he can at the moment, but it is Stuart Gibbons sitting in the 10th place as these guys run side by side here. McCutchinson and Dylan DaCosta. Costa tries to cut back. He's got his teammate Ludovic Jure coming up alongside him for the TX drivers. Now he's going to try and go up on the inside. He's going to have the outside for NASCAR Ben. That will be taken by McCutchinson as he goes through the double left-hander and on the run up into turn four, which is left hook before they start going on the snake again. Clean racing so far, side by side action. And as, as I say that, Dylan DaCosta holds it in that Renault Clio. Yep, nearly going around there for DaCosta. Brilliant to save the car as they head through that next part of the circuit. We can see Jure as well looking to try and capitalise off that one as they head through in towards this next part. We can see there Van Ols looking to make a move ahead of Jure as well to get himself up into P4 as they head 
into the Sorp Hill right-hander here and as well. We've got Clasper in sick looking to try and close in himself and make a move. But brilliant for Maxwell to lead by 1.7 seconds. And I'm sure, as you said earlier, James, he would be happy if there was no reverse grid. And we'll see what he can do if he has to start a little bit further back. Obviously, it's the, the top 10 reverse for the second race and the top 15 reverse for the third race. So Maxwell, we'll see what he can do after to try and work through traffic next time here. Because I think for now, he's, um, he's going to be smooth sailing for these next 18 minutes. Yeah, I think it is. I think for Luke, it, it puts it where he should be, right? Right, which is probably at the front mm -hmm. on based on qualifying pace but the reverse grid just mixes it up and see how we can get through dan lewis chasing down david clasper here clasper's joined the season this evening literally about an hour ago um and has come along and got himself involved dan lewis now with the draft is he going to be able to make it around the outside coming into the horseshoe lewis on the right clasper on the left lewis gives him a bit of a squeeze clasper manages to keep his nose in it's kian palmer waiting to pick up any pieces any break runs that's given to him on that run down into nascar ben but lewis at the moment is going to have the inside for it he's going to be able to get through he has cleared clasper and puts himself up into sixth place Brilliant move there from Lewis and Deedon as well. Keen Palmer there looking to gain in and make a move ahead of class. But for P7 as they head through, and I thought we saw a bit of a change there for second place. It looks like the cost is ahead of Jure, ahead of McCutcheon now, who's dropped down to P4 and still looking to try and close in here on the back of Jure for P3. And of course, Van Alst as well sitting in P5 looking to close in on McCutcheon. And I think we have a move being made in towards that help hill, and I think that might be McCutcheon round. Hey. No, he's just been pinballed back straight as John McCutcheon. <laughs> so he, he got a help, unfortunately, from Salmon Olsen to go round. And now Johnny McCutcheon managed to hold on. It was a very difficult situation. He's gone to try and take Jure, left the door open. Van olsen has gone up the inside. McCutcheon has closed him off. Then he's got a bump from Clasper. Then he got bumped again from Clasper that put him straight. And now John McCutcheon will be able to carry on here. Clasper is behind McCutcheon with Keon Palmer, Wayne Palmer behind him. Son is in front of father here. That's going to be an interesting one in the Palmer <laughs> household. And as John McCutcheon does come into the pits, he's probably going to use his fast repair and get himself on his way. Carl Jacklett and Paul Godden side by side with Edwin Parfit behind with Chris Barnes behind that. Rob Williams and Deck Crowver at the back. But here comes now Paul Godden. Is he going to be able to make that move down into turn one? He's not going to be close enough this time, Nathan, but I think he's going to be close enough by the time he gets around here again. Yeah, he went for the sun there. You could see he was quite close, but just not quite close enough there to make a move in towards that first corner. But we can see further ahead there. Lewis looking to defend here from um, Van Ols as they head through in towards this next left hand here. Then at turn three and four, you can see there a bit of a lock up there from Lewis as they headed through there. And that obviously lost in the position and completely conceded it to um, Van Ols now, who's in P4 naturally. They've lost a lot of time to the top three there. 2.2 seconds separating Jure. And Van Alter, as they head down towards the uphill right hander at turn number nine, and we can see as well that gap between Maxwell and DaCosta. It's going up, but not as much as it was earlier on. So we can see DaCosta here looking a bit more nailed in and looking to try and close that gap here to DaCosta. As I thought it was classified, they're going a little yeah, bit wide. I'm not yeah. sure if he's got damage. Uh, yeah, he did go wide coming out of turn seven, unfortunately, for Clasper. And now he's got Kieran Palmer, the young lad, right behind him, taking in the up the mantle for the Palmer household. He's got Dad tucked up right behind him as they drop down into the roller coaster, the left hander. Through turn 15, Palmer's got a run out. He's looking up the inside. Clasper says no. Now they're going to drop down onto the right hander. Palmer just gets that a little bit You're wrong, does young Kieran. And now he's opening the door up a little bit for Stuart Gibbons and Wayne Palmer to come through. Of course, and we'll see what these lot can do as they head down towards turn one. We can see Palmer gaining in. We can see Gibbons as well looking to make a move here as they head down to turn one. We can see it's going to be Shoot Gibbons on the inside of Wayne Palmer. Into the breaking zone they go, and no move can be really made. The two, um, you know, the two father and son looking to block um, Gibbons off as they head through that first corner. And I think there, Wayne Palmer went a little bit wide on the exit of turn one, and that's lost him a lot of time as they head through now in towards turns number two and number three. And still, we can see Gibbons looking to make a move here, this time ahead of Keen Palmer. Yeah, he's trying to battle his way through. Van Olsen and Lewis are side by side. 
but Ols went wide. That's allowed Lewis to come through here. We've got Carl Jacklett, Paul Godden, Edward Parfit, and Chris Barnes. They're fighting it out further down, so that's all the way down from 10th, 11th, 12th, 13th, 14th, and 15th, scrapping away here once more. So let's see what happens, what the development takes place, and is Dylan De Costa going to be able to hold on for Ludovic Jure and his, well, their teammates? So this could be an interesting one with Dan Lewis here, still with Sam Van Oles tucked up behind him. Indeed, it will. We can see Lewis yet again looking to try to, to defend here from Van Alstin P5. And of course, Jure looking to catch up and get past the back of De Costa, who's obviously still in second place at this current time. Seven minutes gone out of the 20 minutes here. So still just over halfway left to go in this race. And that gap between De Costa and Maxwell not really going up any more than it was in the last couple of minutes. We can see once again Van Alst looking to make a move here ahead of Lewis as they head down to turn one, just trying to tuck back behind for some slip trim. And then he'll pull out to the outside to try and make that move down towards that first corner here. As you can see in gaining in, looking to pull to the outside. We'll see if he can get the move this time around the outside at that first corner. Yeah, I don't think he's going to manage it. Sam Van Alst looks like he's going to be able to get it. Is he going to try to cut back here for Sam? He's not. Dan Lewis managing to hold on. In the ESRL green machine coming down into the NASCAR bend. He's going to have the inside line is Lewis. And he does hold on to that position from Van Ose. He doesn't make it this time. Clasper, however, has got Gibbons, who's under attack from the Palmers. And I say Palmers because his dad is Wayne, son is Kian, And Kian in that JBB livery machine is in front of dad at the moment. So let's see how he gets on and whether or not he can hold dad back as well as tacking Stuart Gibbons at the same time. Yeah, you can see him here to the outside as I head up this next bit of a right hand up the hill. You can see him going to try and go around the outside. That's a tuck back behind as I head up the hill. He's going to go around the outside as he get, gets a better exit here than Gibbons. And I think now it's his dad alongside him as I head up the hill into all these next couple of corners. They go side by side. Will Wayne get the move done? I think he will as he goes around the outside and he gets the move done brilliantly there from Wayne Palmer. Now up into P8 ahead of his son, Keen Palmer. And then you can see as well, Jacquelet just behind him, P10, looking to also gain into catch up to this battle. Bit of a lock up there for Gibbons as he heads down the hill. So we'll see what that does for him and hopefully doesn't get, affect his tyres too much. He's got a two second gap up to Clasper in P6. So his main aim now is to try and catch up to that gap because he's looking to try and break away a bit here from Palmer. Yeah, he is currently. Clasper's trying to get onto the back of Lewis. Lewis is still attacking in with Van Olst, who's only three temps up the road. Chris Barnes has got Paul Gordon after young Mr. Edward Parfit. Unfortunately, he's gone off the side of the racetrack, overcooks it, misses breaking point, and manages to come back on there. So, manages to stay all the way down currently. Well, he's just had to go into the pit, so maybe he's got damage as Barnes and Godden side by side going through the horseshoe, down through the NASCAR bend. Barnes is going to have to try and run it all the way around the outside if he's going to make it work. Is he going to be able to hold on? He's going to use a bit of the exit now in through turn five the, for the left hook, I should say. Now he see um, for Godden, he's got it all a little bit wrong, and Barnes has got to go and get it again. So, uh, yeah, tough one for Barnes, but he's looking strong of course we'll see what he can do as the uh, race gets yeah continues underway 10 minutes to go here so just reaching that halfway point of this race and Barnes looking to close in yet again we can see as well Palmer there just behind the back of Wayne as they head up the hill and the gaps looking to start to increase now as this race gets underway and gets further through we can see it though once again Barnes looking to make a move ahead here of Gordon as they head up the hill then back down the hill in a second before heading back up it's a bit of like a roller coaster section this is in this middle and final sector and Barnes looking to try and just stay behind for now and then probably set the move up down towards that first corner using that slip stream on the back of the car to try and launch himself ahead and get the move back in towards P10. Yeah, well, that's the vitally important due to the fact that obviously P10 is the pole position for race number two. Godden's gone a little bit wide. He's on the grass wide. That's going to allow Barnes to come through. Barnes is going to get the top 10. Now Godden's got to fight it over the next eight and a half minutes. Is he going to be able to hang on? That's going to be the question as these guys have been battling it out consistently here. Clasper slowly getting been brought in by Gibbons. Palmer, Wayne Palmer has cleared some. Kian Palmer as Kian there looks like it was Dan Lewis that may have started. Oh, hello. Where are you going, Dad? There he is. He's gone off the Ooh. side of the circuit and he's jumped out to come back to the pits. And Wayne passed Dan Lewis and Kian 
past him as well as Wayne is uh, down is still on the left hand side there as both of them go through I'm trying to find where Wayne passed Kian and this is it slow exit running up out of the uphill and then Wayne just sweeps around the outside job done and Kian leaves him room so uh, yeah, so very interesting to see what works out here with Gibbons and uh, also Wayne Palmer. Kieran Palmer's now dropped into the hands of Carl Jacklett. That is one man you do not want tucked up behind you. <laughs> Jacklett is not afraid of taking it to the max, shall we say. Well, we'll see what Jacklett can do. We'll see if he can try uh, making him move ahead of Kean as his laps get underway. We can see, though, Palmer still got a four-tenth gap here to the back of Gibbons as they head through in towards the final quarter to head back down towards turn number one. Jacklett, they're going a little bit wide as they head out of the final quarter. And also Kean Palmer there touching the grass as they head out of the final quarter. That's going to give him a poor run down towards turn number one. So we should see Jacklett here gaining a little bit more uh, than he probably would have done if Kean didn't go that wide. Palmer still looking to gain in here to make a move for peace six on the back of Gibbons but he's also not close enough yet to make that move in towards that first corner here but we can see now uh, Jacklet gaining in the braking zone key and a little bit of a poor exit going wide to give Jacklet a good run up towards these next couple of corners here it looks like already Jacklet could be looking to try and pose up for a move here up the inside possibly no back safe for now but we'll be looking for it quite shortly in someone there's had a bit of a lock up in towards that corner yeah, big old puffs of smoke coming out of these Cleos where they do just unsettle the weight and then it just unfortunately kicks in and then it gets a big old pile of smoke coming out as the tyre drags on the racetrack. For, um, we've got literally coming up to six minutes remaining of the first one. Carl Jacklett, Kian Palmer, this is not done. Wayne Palmer, Stuart Gibbons, this is not done. Ludovic Jure, is he going to get close enough to his teammate? Well, time will tell. And we will find out here if the, t if the virtual drives by TX3 are going to battle it out or if they're going to stay as they are in that team unison effect. But Kian Palmer, now as Jacklett comes down, down through the roller coaster they go. They're going to take the right. And they've got to drop down the hill to the left hander keep it pinned to the inside if you can try and open it up a little bit now lock it back in over the curb now over the outside curb now on the inside curb and keep it off the grass on the exit very difficult corner that section between 14 and 17. It is indeed. I think this track on a whole is all, you know, it's quite a difficult track, it, you know, in general. And that's why many drivers who are a bit newer here might have a bit of a struggle compared to others. And, you know, you can see here with um, Palmer and Jacklet, you can see Jacklet's a little bit more tuned in. He, he seems to, you know, know the circuit a little bit more and be a bit more confident in towards some of these breakings. And he goes to the outside into turn one here to make the move ahead of Palmer. Keeps it to the outside as they head round the first corner. Brilliant defence there from Keen as they head now through in towards these next couple of corners. Jacklet there just looking to tough back in behind to give himself a bit of a slipstream then the inside Palmer goes straight to the inside to defend the move brilliant defense here from Keane but the question is how long can he hold this defense up for because down towards turn one if he gets another good run there's nothing Keane can do to stop Jacklet here yeah definitely not you're just gonna have to watch as Jacklet McBrawl try and muscle his way through Gibbons has got Wayne literally side by side there coming into the uphill the very tricky right hand uh, Gibbons is holding on Wayne is trying to get past him nothing doing for these guys as they go through the lovely section of 8 9 10 11 12 and 12 8 to 14 apparently because we didn't like 13 we called it a 12 a instead Nave. Yeah, I, I don't get some of these corner names and why they've got letters after them because to me that's not a corner on Brizzy when it's got A, B, C and D. So I'll just stick to 12, 13 and 14. As I head now down towards this final part of the circuit and we'll get underway yet again for the 12th lap of the race. And Costa now looking to be under pressure here from Giro for second as I head down towards that first corner here. Maybe we'll see a move here from Giro as they head into the braking zone and Giro tucking in behind here, wanted to keep that slip in there. Bit of a lock up from... Um, De Costa as well as they head through there and we'll see the two teammates get to a bit of a battle here tonight and we'll see what happens between these two and I've got to say I love that even though they're in the same team one of them's got a pink livery and the other one's got a green livery they're brilliant it makes it easier to uh, differentiate between the drivers the problem is for Jure is how much and how much pressure is he going to put his teammate under coming into the final three minutes that's going to be the question are they going to go for points uh, are they going to go for team play or are they just going to battle it out in championship? Now, for me, I'd want them to go at it, right? Because that's just the yeah. way I am and I, I just want them to fight like Kian Palmer and Kane.
Carl Jacklett, Kian's not given up. Stuart Gibbons has been off the side of the circuit, unfortunately. That's Wayne Palmer. Gibbons just goes in too hot. Ooh. This is his breaking point and unfortunately comes down there. Ronald Hebelon. Hello. Hello, dear sir. Thank you so much for joining us. Hope you are well and having a fabulous evening on this Monday. As these guys wiggle their way in through 11, 12, 13, and then 14. I'm not going 12, eh? <laughs> <laughs> That's just ridiculous. But, you know, I think it's been quite an action-packed opening. And, and oh, Ooh. Jacqueline. It's gone wide. That's going to allow Kian to sweep through. Oh, Carl Jacqueline makes a mistake. That allows Kian to go through. Now the young lad is going to be on his bike, bolted away here. But now we've got Barnes. Now we've got Crowther. Now we've got Gibbons. Now we've got Jacqueline. We could be in for a nice little four-car Barney as we're going to go on to the penultimate lap. We could indeed, as they all head back down towards turn one here, we can see Gibbons under pressure from Crowther and also Barnes behind as well, looking to make a move in towards turn number one. We can see this will be Gibbons to the outside, in or sorry, up the inside, sorry, in towards oh. that first corner. That's going indeed. That'll be Keen Palmer going very deep at turn number one, doing exactly what Jacklet did a few corners earlier in that last lap. We'll see here Keen Palmer as he headed down towards turn one. I'm not sure where we'll see what happened to him, but he just went a little bit wide. He went wide as well at the final yeah. corner, so Palmer there, looking to be under a bit too much pressure as he looks to make the move ahead. Oh, of just just into turn one. Oh, Gibbons, misses. isn't it, all over again. Yeah, he just misses his breaking point and drops himself down there, does young Kian. And unfortunately, that is going to be a job done for him. Luke Maxwell's on the way through. He's got Dan Lewis in front of him. And after we saw Lewis go off the side of the circuit, so... For Dan, he's now could be under pressure unless Maxwell, I don't believe, is going to make it. But I do believe we're going to see Barney waving frantically on the final lap of the race. Look, Maxwell's gone out. He's had a dominant victory. He's taking it here to Spy Storm. And he's going to come over the line to start that final lap. Here, there's Barney up in the gag tree. And off goes Luke, repeating, well, basically carrying on where he left off last week. Yeah, doing a brilliant job so far is Maxwell at the front of the field and we can see the Costa here under a little bit less pressure from Giray at the front. You can see that gap looking to increase and yes, again, we can see Crowther now looking to make a move ahead of Jacklet for P7 as they head down towards that first corner. Once again, we'll see what moves can be made. We can see there Crowther looking to use that slipstream on the back of the other Clio ahead of him. Jacklet looking to go to the outside to defend here from... Um, Crow that as they head into turn one, do any moves be sent? They will be moves sent here. They go oh. side by side into the first corner. Further back, that will be Barnes, Barnes going off the circuit. Very, very deep then. It looks like he touched the grass into turn one. And once you touch that grass in the braking zone, you cannot save the car. No, it's definitely game over, unfortunately. it's just, Even though they've added depth, it Ooh. still does slow you down. But it doesn't slow you down enough as Jacklet gets it all a little bit wrong. Coming into the left hook of turn four. He's now going to go up the inside. There's now going to be a little bit of rubbing, but it is going to be Crowther who's going to come away with that position. We'll keep an eye on Maxwell as I believe he has just lapped. Dan Lewis is Maxwell coming around the last few corners, but now it's side by side. Carl Jacklet on the left, Deck Crowther on the right, Stuart Gibbons in the Blade Designs livery machine behind him. Now going to be fighting it out once more as they're coming through. There's down through eight, nine, ten, and eleven but it is going to be Luke Maxwell. He's going to come over the line. He's going to take the win. He's going to resume where he lifted off. And now he does get the victory here in an official round once more. Jure did not attack Dylan De Costa as De Costa comes over in second. What is happening down here with Carl Jacklet? Well, this is what's going on. He's now in front of Deck Crowther. And once more, let's see. I think it is going to be Carl Jacklet going to be hanging on for race Ooh. one. And in the final spot that's going to take pole position in race two, young Kian Palmer comes over the line behind. He's going to be on pole for race number two. Rob Williams comes over the line in 12th. He just misses out. Paul Godden, after a bit of a rough one for him, is down in 13th place. But still... The reverse grids to come. Hold on to your hats. Hope you all are well. Don't forget to like, subscribe, turn on the bells and do all that other fancy jazz that you can do here for free. As we'll bring you up the grid for heat number one. And it is Kian Palmer in first with Hugh Gibbons in second. Deck Crowther in third. Carl Jacklet in fourth. Wayne Palmer in fifth. Um, oh, no. Hold on a minute. Where are we going? Come back here. Give me the results first. Let's have the results. 
before you go into that one. There we go. Luke Maxwell is your winner with Dylan DaCosta or Ludovic Jure. Sam Van Olst in fourth with David Clasper in fifth. Wayne Palmer in sixth. Then Carl Jacklett, Deck Crowther in seventh and eighth. Gibbons in ninth. Palmer in tenth. We'll be on pole for the next one. Kieran Palmer there taking pole position. Chris Barnes, Rob Williams, Paul Goddard, Dan Lewis, Edward Parfitt and John McHutchinson is the final there. Let's bring up the grid now for race number two. And Kian Palmer is in first place with Stu Gibbons second. Deck Crowther in third with Carl Jacklett in fourth. Then we've got Wayne Palmer, David Clasper, Sam Van Ols, Ludovic Jure, Dylan DaCosta and Luke Maxwell. Top 10 reverse. Chris Barnes, Rob Williams, Paul Gollan, Dan Lewis and Edward Parfitt. I don't believe John McHutchison is retaking it. Not loving the circuit, unfortunately, for John. But, yeah... Still fighting, still action, and I think this reverse grid, Naif, is going to bring up even more. It will. Well, you look at Kean Gibbons, Crow, the Jacqueline, and Palmer, they was all battling throughout that whole race. So now, the Costa, Jure, Maxwell, who were looking clear in the first race, they've got to work through a, ba uh, you know, a battle of five cars, all looking to try and take podiums of victory. So they'll be battling even harder than they were before. So there's a lot of work for those who are a little bit faster and a little bit further down now to do to get themselves back up towards the top. But Kean, I feel like it's good to see him on pole, but you saw he got under pressure early on when he was defending from lots of Gibbons and um, Jacklett, and now he's going to be on pole, a lot more pressure on him. So hopefully he can try and get himself settled down and get himself into a rhythm mm. after that first launch and try and try and take it home to victory here. Yeah, they've got five minutes of grilling while they all have a break there. Eves, okay. Okay. <laughs> Hi, Eves. I don't know if you're supposed to put that, but you put E. Okay, so okay. Thank you so much. Um, there, as we wait for the cars to get to the grid, uh, but let's see. I think how they get on top ten reverse reverse grid, somewhat of an interesting feature, and not one that you generally would see around on on certain leagues and stuff like that. But it just gives it that different dynamic. Yeah, it does. And I think it's a good thing to see because, like I said before, drivers that might not do too well in qualifying could always be a lot better in the race pace. And that's something that they'll benefit from here when they start a little bit further up, of course, on that grid. And also, those further back, they can have a chance once again to try fight at the front. If they had a bit of a poor race, maybe got a bit of a tap from someone, spun around or you know went a little bit wide and lost a couple of positions, they've now going to be a couple of positions ahead in this race, so they have time to try and fight for it once again. And of course, with the point system being the same across the three races, they're not going to be you know compromised by the fact there's less points or whatever. They're all going to be mm. looking to try and take that 50 points for the victory, which I think Keem Harvey would, you know, would be very happy with if it can do so. And I think for those like Keen and Gibbons who might not be that front-running pace, their main name here. It's probably around the top five. Mm. It is. I think that's the thing. One of the things they've got to try and do is stop Maxwell, De Costa, and Jure coming through yeah. with Van Alst. I think that would be on my first priority from them to basically do that. They've got to make sure that they can stop this situation. You know, you don't want to go in and lose it because you've yeah. been... Uh, well, I was going to use the terminology of silly Billy, but, uh, you know, everybody gets a rough <laughs> idea what I mean. But, uh, you know, they want to make sure that they can hold on to these places as long as possible. Yeah, indeed. And, you know, I think that's where we'll get to see the driver's racecraft element come through as well. And obviously being under a bit more pressure, they could try and fight for positions a little bit harder. So we could see some brilliant racing from those guys at the top. And also those further down, likes of, you know, Edward Parfit, Dan Lewis, they're going to start from a little, little bit further back. Their hopes will be either, try, you know, we'll be also trying to move forward and get a few more points here in this race, obviously. Even though they're down in 50, they're still going to take eight points away if they stay down in the bottom position and also get pole for the next race. So it wouldn't be the worst situation for Edward and um, down at the bottom, but it was, still wouldn't be the best situation, of course, no. being down near the back of the grid. And as you say, I don't believe McHutchison will continue, which is uh, a big shame. Yeah, as I said, just not quite getting on with the circuit here tonight, which can happen. Gibbo's sitting in second. We're just waiting for young Kian, Deck Crowther, Sam Van Oost to make it on to the grid before the five and a little bit minutes will happen. Um, as we do give them a little bit of a break between this race. They have got three, mind you. So um, 
quite a little bit of a mission from all. Sam Van Ols now just going to be the last one, is he? He is. He's on to the grid. There is young Kian. He's going to be up and running and fighting out for that front place. He's got to hold on for it as long as possible. The lights are coming on now. We've got one. We've got two. We've got three. We've got four. We've got five. Five. And now we're green and Kian's missed the start. Oh, Kian Palmer missed the start. He didn't go anywhere. He literally, the floodgates have opened up for the young man. And he has just lost place after place after place. And it's all the way down in seventh place at the moment. Kian Palmer did not get off the line. He literally, I don't know if he missed the gear, he bogged down, whatever the situation was, but it didn't go well. And one man that has capitalized from that is Stuart Gibbons with Deck Crowther. Luke Maxwell still down in that 10th place. Free wide up for two by two at the moment now. They've dropped out of the free wide, thank God, as they're now going into 2v2. Luke's just got to be patient. I'm sure he'll clear the cars, but he's just got to do it bit by bit by bit here. And at the moment, Stuart Gibbons with the whole shot, getting away, backed up by Deck Crow. Of course, and a very good start from DaCosta in P6, moving up from ninth position. They're looking to try and take P5 away from. And that will be Clasper, I think, as they head up the hill in towards the next couple of corners. You can see there into P5 goes the Costa ahead of Vanos, that was, sorry, as they head up the hill. And then we'll be looking to get himself ahead of David Clasper here. And Luke Maxwell still stuck then in P8. Not able to clear some of these cars as quickly as possible. And that's good here for the Costa. He can try, and if he can get to the front, try and build that gap away mm. from Maxwell, who's looking very fast at the current uh, moment, obviously, from what we saw in the previous race. But the Costa yet again looking to gain in here ahead of Clasper. And also, we could see um, Jack Lip and Crowder having a good battle for P2 and P3, and also catching up there to the back of Stuart Gibbons. So I'm not sure if he. If he made a mistake on that lap somewhere obviously with the colder tires at the start it also means drivers might have a bit of a struggle getting them nice and warmed up what we can see here jackly in the back of crowther's are heading towards turn one more make a move to put himself into second and i'm not quite sure he'll be close enough here no, he's not going to be close enough this time around, but Jacklet's not going to ease up. He's got the two blades defending like one knife here on the race circuit as they're going to be going through second, through to NASCAR Ben, turn number three, the left-hander. There they go. Then they're going to be coming in up through four. Then this will be effectively the left hook. Now they're going to come back on themselves up through five. They've got to try and get the exit. Jacklet does get the exit as these guys continue to fight it out. But at the moment, Gibber and Krauber are opening up a gap. Svanos, Costa and Clasper are in this mid-pack with Jure, Maxwell, Kian Palmer behind it. Still in front of Dad, mind you. So that's always good. And we <laughs> it's up one place in front of Dan Lewis, the ex-teammates from last season. So Edwards joined up with Kian this season. And now, um, fortunately, Dan Lewis is down there as he's riding solo. As these guys go sweeping up through 9 and 10, down through 11, 12 and 13. Coming into 14, roller coaster. Oh, no. Hold oh. it. Hold it. Hold it. Oh, Clasper. Has he held it? I can't really tell. Well, they're three wide coming down the hill. So that's never going to work out. As Sam Van Alston, Dylan DaCosta are having a little bit of a humdinger there. Maxwell's in the mix. He's scrubbing it. Oh, oh. DaCosta's gone. Go blimey. Yeah. Dylan DaCosta went like an absolute rocket. Yeah, into the barriers goes the Costa, so he could be done for this one, I think, here, James. Big shame for him as well, and uh, I'm not sure what happened there, but it looks like three or four of them went round at one point, but unfortunately it was the Costa who came out in the worst part of that. Maxwell looking to make a move as well. You can see, look up for the back, and another contact him to turn one here. Oh, Ooh, Maxwell. And that's Maxwell, gone round. Ludovic Jure trying the inside. He's not going to make it work. He, oh, he tried it again. Oh, dude, there wasn't a gap there. And unfortunately, Clasper went off the side of <laughs> the circuit. Dylan DaCosta, well, he just went off like an absolute rocket as he come across the nose of Clasper and sent Costa all the way, Ryan, backwards there, unfortunately, for Luke Maxwell. Clasper's now jumped back to the pits. Maxwell's now carrying on down in 13th. Lost an absolute bunch of time. Yeah. But Dan Lewis, Edward Parfit, Edward's now going to try and go side by side with Chris Barnes into the uphill. Don't leave the inside door open there, son. You're going to get your, you're literally going to get robbed by Dan Lewis as these guys continue to fight it out. But poor old Gibber, for poor old Maxwell, poor old De Costa, and poor old David Clasper. Yeah, Clasper got, I think, hit about three times on that one lap. Big show for him. He's down in P15 in the pit lane. Going to be coming back out 
in 15th place. And also all of that battle in there brought Kian back into the top five now. So he's also looking to recuperate from what happened earlier on in his start. We can see Gibbons once again still leading ahead of Crowther, ahead of Jacklet in P3. These three have been battling all race long pretty much and nothing much really happening between those guys as they head down in towards this next section. We can see here Crowther looking to gain in to make a move for P2. Looking to the outside, looking back to the inside here, looking where to find a way past. Yeah, he don't want to leave the door open because you give Jacklet a little sniff and he's going to be in there like a rat up a drain pipe. He is not going to let you leave the door open. I thought at one point Deck and Stewart were flying like in formation going down the start finish straight. Gibbo on the right, Deck on the left. They were blocking both sides of the racetrack as they are doing now. Stopping Jacklet come through. Gibbons too hot, buddy. Too hot. Oh, Stuart Gibbons, oh, yeah, all the work gone and done after that first one there, just running a little bit hot. Now he's going to go try and get rid of a slowdown, and Kia Palmer finds himself in fourth with Ludovic Jure behind. But Chris Barnes is finding himself right in the mix with 2v2 of Gordon, Parfit and Lewis as they're flying off down through into turn seven. Is mega defence needed here from Barnes. We can see as well that was Gordon going a little bit wide as well, heading out of that corner. And then Dan Lewis behind looking to try and gain back through and make a move ahead as we can see Parvick there. A bit of lag it seems at the moment for him. He's just chucking a bit of dirt up at the ground as they head up in towards that next section. And, and you can still see there looking to try and gain in to make a move back ahead of Chris Barnes. But we can see Vanos there in third place looking to make a move here on the back of Jacklet for P2. And this would be brilliant for Vanos. Obviously, Maxwell and DaCosta a little bit further than Jure as well in P5. This is brilliant for Vanos to get some more points here in this race. Started P7, I believe, now in the top three, looking to make it a second place here as they head down towards the next couple of corners. Obviously, part of the Goldwing Motorsport team is Van Ols, so will be looking to score some brilliant points for the team. And you can see Deck Crow at the top looking to try and stretch that gap to over a second and breaking out there was Jacklet. And this is good, isn't it, here for Crow, to try and pull away a bit with all these guys behind battling. Yeah, absolutely. It allows Crowther to take the overall if he can, and he did it. He managed it before and took the overall win. Well, what was for the Ams? Obviously, we've now ditched the Ams, so we're now this is the overall overall. The Crowther's on for a good old 50 points. This is going to bring a right old dump ding dong going in here, and an incredible job from Crowther with Jacklet as these guys continue to scrap it out. They continue to fight. Sam Van Olsen, Jacklet, th this could be fireworks. And I'll say this in the nicest possible way, that both of these men do not like giving up a gap. They are, all, they are both on the philosophy of, if there's a gap there and you leave me a gap, I'm going through it. So, um, yeah, this could be, yeah, this could have more fireworks than the Japanese New Year. <laughs> we'll see what happens between the two as they head down in towards this final couple of corners once again to begin the next lap of this race. Seven minutes in, 20 minutes of course in this race on a whole, so 15 minutes-ish left to go here tonight. We can see as well Jacklet there looking to lose even more time to the back of Deck Crowther who's got a 1.2 second gap as they head down to turn number one. We can see Palmer there being behind Girena, so Jure looking to close in to that top three and Van Ols looking here to make yourself into P2, looking to gain in there. The gap's just over two tenths of a second. Isn't close enough to make a move into turn number one. So we'll just, um, you know, just, just concede for now and hope that Jacklet can make a mistake. We can see as well Barnes here defending from, uh, that'll be, I'm uh, sorry, Williams defending from Barnes here in towards turn number one. And Maxwell has got himself right back into this battle already. Yeah, he's all the way up into 10th. He's cleared Parfit, he's cleared Godden. Parfit has just cleared Godden. Just running side by side, having a right old little ding dong all the way through. There's always somebody to fight out, remember, as these guys collectively get points. Maxwell's now gone and forced himself up in the inside of Chris Barnes. Now he's going to have the run out. That's going to give Barnes the inside line going through the first section of the snake. Now Maxwell takes it. What is Williams going to do? This is going to be the thing. The admin for the Cleos. Is he going to hold on? How much holding on is he going to do? And can he even remote? keep Luke Maxwell behind him. Rob will, self-confessed, not the quickest in the Cleos. So let's see what happens here for Rob and how long he's going to be able to hold on to this position and how long he's going to be able to keep hold of that um, eighth place. It's going to be, well, I think it's going to be tough for him here. It will. 
and he's got a lot of work to do, but you just got to hope that it can go into his favour as they head down to finish up lap six of this race and we'll look at him trying to gain in here. Maxwell looking to make himself up into P8 after having a bit of a poor start here. Didn't make oh, many positions and once he did, he got sent back down. He's looking for the move up the inside there. Going to be a bit of a touch and go between the two as they head down to turn number one. He's got a brilliant run alongside um, Rob Williams and also we can see as well Bars looking to close in as well to try and gain in as well as they head down to turn one we could go three wide here Jay oh no. Chris Barnes you sneaky little rascal pushing Rob Williams there down the straight bump drafted him down trying to get Rob to get past Luke Maxwell still not going to do it Maxwell's going to hold on the Kraken Racing boys in the red and the silver they're going to team up on, jo on Luke Maxwell now Barnes is gone for the inside Oof. he's gone Williams is gone for the inside sorry Barnes He's now under attack from Edward. They're running 2v2 as they're coming through left hook. And at the moment, Maxwell's not escaping as these guys continue to fight behind. Now Williams and Parfit are going to be going at it with Chris Barnes. It's cracking racing, JPB Esports. Let's see what comes out of this one. There's still great action with Ludovic Jure and Carl Jacklett still at the front as well with Sam Vanos. So we'll keep an eye on them ones. But at the moment, Chris Barnes is sitting back watching all them ones. John's in YouTube channel. Chinese New Year. Oh, no, I'm sorry, mate. I had to pick something <laughs> and I couldn't think of anything at the time. So, unfortunately, it was Chinese New Year. Oh, Edward getting a little bit forceful with Chris Barnes there. Now, Barnes, he's got Godden. Is Godden going to be a little bit forceful as well? Giving him a little love tap. Dan Lewis in the background. Dylan DeCosta's caught back up and is now trying to humding his way through the field once more. What's happening up here? Jacqueline and Vanos, they've not quite had the battle that I was expecting, knowing what both of these drivers are like. Yeah, Vanos has just kind of sat back. He hasn't really been bothered, I don't think, here to make a move ahead of Jacqueline for P2. And obviously, Crowther, we can see ahead, obviously leading away. We can see a bit of a lockup there from Jacqueline. That's not ideal at all. For him, in P2, obviously part of the photomedia.com team, so we'll see what he can do and hopefully try and bring a podium home for his team indeed. And Jure gaining in, but not as quick as I thought he would onto the back of this battle for a second. So we'll see what Jure can do and what he can make of this battle. And this time it will be Vanos to the outside. They're looking to make a bit He's of a switch back, back up the inside. Oh, it's going to be a bit of a tap there to the back of Jacqueline, and that's going to be close to contact, James. And as soon as you said, nothing really happened. They both get to contact at turn number five. Yeah, Jure's now going to come through. He's got a massive overspeed on Vanos. Coming out of that corner, they're going to be running side by side into turn seven. Jure is going to get through. Van Oost is not going to hold on. And now it's Ludovic Jure going to have a go at Carl Jackley. I told you Jackley weren't going to roll over and get his belly tickled. He was going to fight all day all day and he did and he is and he still will and there's probably not the word quit in this man's vocabulary as we're going around into the last seven minutes just about da costa dan lewis they're fighting out further down chris barnes is now in front he's lost time to edward parfit who's closing down on rob williams so they're coming together we got the top four five well, four, no, hold on, second, third, fourth, and fifth. And then we've got the, the back end of 9th, 10th, 11th, 12th, 8th, 14th, 15th, still having a little bit of a ding dong. Indeed, and we can see here once again, Sheree looking to make a move for ter uh, into turn one for P2 here as they head in towards that first corner. We can see as well Van Alston, Palmer looking to try and make some moves. We can see Van Alston looking to make a bit of a cut back on. Jure, but couldn't quite get it done there. We can see Jure looking to make him move ahead here of Jacklip as they head down towards the next part of this circuit. We can see there for a second, Vanos looking to make and move up the inside of Jure here as they head in towards the next corner. He's up the inside, goes Jure. He's got the inside once again at the next corner. He still keeps it up the inside here, but you can see brilliant defence there from Jure to also try and attack the back of Jacklip. And Keen Palmer just sitting there waiting for something to happen. And his dad, Wayne Palmer, looking to also join this little battle here. Yeah, he's coming into the back now. I will point this out i think edward parfit has been off the side of the circuit poor old mini me just got his brakes all wrong couldn't get it to stop he's Ooh. pumping the brakes hoping to get them stopped and he's done his best to try to come back on he's now got paul godden well there um, so about as close as you can possibly get go down the straight as edward goes into the upper hill godden's going to try to switch back Looks like Edward's gone on the defense. Godden's now going to try and get the big massive overspeed through 8, 9, 10, and 11 as he can. It's going to be single file, little dab of the brakes by Mini Me Junior Parfit in front on his way down into the roller coaster. He's got to get on the brakes, get that car rotated. 
try and get back up onto oh, Dan Lewis, his ex-teammate here. And now, unfortunately for Salva Nost, um, he's making a break for it. Got a little bit jure, but Wayne uh, Carl Jacklett has got Kean Palmer behind him. Of course, we'll see what Keane can do here in towards turn number one. Looking to pull it to the outside here and looks to break a little bit late, earlier, sorry, there to try and cut himself back underneath and behind the back of Jacklet as they head through in towards turn one. Number two next to cut through as well. Then a double left hander in this next part of the circuit. We can see as well, obviously, Jure looking to defend here from Van Olst and Palmer still looking to make a move. Jacklet locks up here. Here, Palmer up the inside, close to contact between the two. And now Palmer can break later at the inside here and try and make that move. But you can see there even later breaking from Jacklet, who then could just cut up the inside, keep that inside line covered and defend himself from Keane behind and also Wayne Palmer behind as well in P6 looking to try and catch up and make a move to pop himself in towards P4. Mm. You've also got Sam but else you can see in the front of this look at Keane Palmer he's literally all over the side of the circuit trying to put off Carl as best as he can now he's going to be looking up the inside he's not going to get it this time but Olst isn't going to get it over little victory we can just see them in front of this battle as we get oh my dearie me Kian going full bore on Carl Jacklet, <laughs> hanging on there, this young lad doing an absolutely stellar job. I believe, if I'm not mistaken, he's only 17 years of age. I think, I think that's right. Um, as he's continued to fight out, he's going to run Ooh. wide out of Hog Pen. No, his dad's going to come up and make a move. He's not, dad's kept it tight and is now running alongside behind him. You see Jure and Van Oost. They're going at each other as we're coming into the final three minutes here, Nathan. And to be honest, I think we've just had action, action, action still all the way through. Of course, and it's like what we saw, wasn't it, in the first race? Obviously, this time it's Crowther who's led away and got that gap to nearly five seconds. We can see Jure and Van Oost still here looking to battle for P2 and P3 as they head through. The next couple of corners, we can see Palmer Silk on the back of his son, Keen Palmer, as they head through in towards this next part of the first set. So once again, and obviously coming through in towards these final few laps here in the second race. And of course, Williams, they're looking to make a move ahead of the Costa Barnes. Lewis all there as well, looking to battle for P9 here in this race. And technically, they're all battling for the second and third row of the grid in next race round. Yeah, Clasper at the moment will be on pole position. He'll be able to get off the line and do a little bit of a run here for Clasper. We've got Crowther, he's on his way down through 8, 9, 10 and 11. He should get one and one more in. Williams is in front of Barnes. He's trying to close down on De Costa. Barnes has got Lewis. Parfit's trying to get into here again. Top left-hand corner, you just see them going over the hill. I'm not quite sure why I'm pointing because you can't actually see that. But Jure and Van Ols were literally running nose to tail. Yep, still looking to make moves here in this race, and Van Ols looking to take a second place ahead of Jure, who's looking to take third as they all head out the final corner once again to begin the next lap. Lap 12, I believe it will be, of this race. And that gap actually between Crowther and Jure. Second now, it's only 3.9 seconds separating first and second. And Van Ols looking to make that gap bigger. His heel will be looking to try and fight here with the back of Jure, making it for P2. We can see once again Palmer. Looking to get it back ahead of Keane as they head down towards turn number one. And Van Ols very close to the back of Jure once again as they head through that first corner. But still, no way through here for Van Ols. We can see further back though, Barnes looking to attack Williams, looking to attack Lewis as well. <laughs> as they all head into turn one and luckily for De Costa, he's kind of broken away from this pack. Yeah, I don't think I'd want to be involved in this one. The Kraken race in SRL, JPP fight is commencing. And it is Williams at the front. Dan Lewis, Chris Barnes, Edward Parfit, Paul Gollum's just gone into the pits, unfortunately. I can't see he's done anything wrong. He's just entered, then he's left, then he's entered again, and now he's back in again. So maybe he's got a little bit of a problem. Crowther is should get one more lap there. As you can see, the orange and white blade designs, livery machine scooting off. There, Maxwell's off the side of the circuit, unfortunately for Luke. He's managed to hold it, he's come back on, but he's now behind Wayne Palmer. Jure and Van Oost are still fighting it out, but here comes Deck Crowber, who should take the white flag this time around, as it's coming into the last minute of the race. Of course, and a brilliant effort here from Crowder so far. Got a four-second gap to Jure 
in second place and all he did at the start was let everything happen and he just went through and just held himself you know had a you know tried to get rid of that pressure he had on him and then pull himself to victory and you know as long as he doesn't make a mistake on this final lap he should easily be taking victory here tonight in the second race of um vi north rain one we can see jure as well in second van also good to make an attack for second as well as they head in towards turn one here around the outside goes Van Ols, but not close enough there to make a move for second place. He'll be, he'll be looking to gain in and make a move, but just can't quite do it at the moment. We can see Maxwell as well looking to get past the back of Palmer, but Palmer's defending well as they head through his next part of the circuit. Bit of a tap, it looked like for a second there between Van Ols and Jura, didn't it, James? Yeah, it definitely did. Close action racing. Wayne Palmer there with Luke Maxwell there alongside him. Maxwell's going to take the position away from Wayne. Now Luke's chasing down young Kian in front. He's got Dad. He's now moving on to Sun. Edwards now trying to close down on Dan Lewis. Ludovic Jure and Sam Van Nolst are still going at it here and are still continuing to fight along nicely. So we'll see how this one pans out. But it looks like this time around it's going to be young Mr. Dick Carver who is going to take the victory here in race number two. Closely followed by Jure and then Van Ols behind that, I think, as these guys will come down to the line in these positions. But Dek Kraber is going to come over the line. He's going to take the victory here for race number two. It's all over for Kraber. It is the win here. Through he goes over the line. He takes the overall once more. And Jure will get second place. But it is all about Dek Kraber at the moment. What about Kian Palmer? He managed to hang on from Luke Maxwell with Wayne Palmer. Stuart Gibbons behind that. Dan Lewis managed to hang on to this position ahead of Edward and Rob, but I believe Mr. Williams went off the side of the circuit. All that hard work he has done here, Naif, gone in one Ooh. foul swoop. Yeah, big shame there indeed for Williams, obviously losing three positions there along that back straight. But the good thing, I suppose, he is that he can start a little bit closer to the front for the next race. He'll be starting, I believe, P4 in the final race here of this evening. And, you know, Deck Crowther, who won there, very nice. He will be starting from the back of the grid, I believe, here. So a big shame for him, I suppose, in that sense of the final race. But I'm sure from the pace he showed so far, he can try and work his way back through the field. But it will be Godden on pole ahead of class for the next, next race. Yeah. Clasper's going to come around. Just managed to not get lapped, um, did Clasper. So he just managed to not get lapped, which means he's all the way around the other side of the circuit. So we've just got to <laughs> kind of unfortunately sit and wait as he goes in through the hog pen and then over the line. And we will bring you up the results when they come up readily available. As Clasper is going over the line, he will start in P2 for race number three. David Clasper, there he goes. Over the line. Jobs a good one. Right, let's pick you up for the results of this one. And it is Dek Kraber, your winner by 3.6 seconds over Ludovic Jure, over Sam Van Ols there, your one, two, three. Carl Jacklett in fourth, Kia Palmer in fifth, Luke Maxwell sixth, Wayne Palmer seventh, Shoot Gibbons eighth. Dylan DaCosta in ninth with Dan Lewis, Edward Parfit, Rob Williams, Chris Barnes, David Clasper and Paul Godden, who will be on pole for the next race. These guys have got a brief five-minute warm-up just to sit and chill here. But I think overall, Nave, another great interesting night of racing. Indeed, yeah. It was a, it was a brilliant race, race, wasn't it, there for race number two. And, well, not at the front in terms of fighting for first. You know, it happened in the first race. Once the person in first flies away, there's nothing that anyone can do behind to catch up. But the battling from second all the way down, pretty much to last position, was brilliant. And I think we'll see that once again in this next race, where the top 15 will be reversed. Yes, top 15 will be reversed. That's going to put Paul Godden on pole with David Clasper. This is where the fireworks can really take place now as the the faster guys of you know Jure, De Costa will look at trying to come back through uh, Sam Van Luke Maxwell it's going to be fiery here this evening so stay tuned for race number three and I think it's going to be a very interesting one Craig Waters in YouTube chat welcome in buddy hope you are well well done Deck he said as Deck has taken the overall victory here of course we made got rid of the pro and ams it's now just one straight fight across the field to be honest i still think that's the right thing nathan's literally anybody can 
possibly take the win here. Yeah, but I think that's what we saw, wasn't it, from the first two races. Anyone is going to be fighting for victory. We saw many people fighting for the top fives, fighting for the top tens, like we saw with Kean Palmer started on pole, dropped down to P10, battling ahead, promoted him up to P4 at one point. So, you know, it just shows as well, if you can keep yourself out of trouble, you can easily make some mm -hmm. positions through. But, James, have you got any predictions for this final race of what you think could happen here? No. Um, <laughs> I, the, the, the problem is I don't, because these guys could bring such great racing... Yeah. And then all of a sudden it can be absolutely chaotic. I think whenever you're in a race and whether it be an official race, which is generally where you hear it the most. And that guy at the front always says, good luck. I know full well that that guy at the front will be the first one to cause the calamity because it's not mm -hmm. about luck when you're racing. It's about how impatient and how stupid you want to be. And that's the problem. If it was all about luck, great. But it's not. It's just how crazy do people want to be in a race and how fiery do they want to be? And I don't know if you have the same thing at home. Let me know as well if you do. That the, the person who always says, good luck, everyone, is the first person to do two things. A, go off the side of the circuit and B, run on the microphone like an absolute lunatic. Yeah. Well... It's normally the people that are a little bit too overconfident, isn't it, James? They get a little bit too overconfident at the start. They feel like they're on the best pace than everyone else. They pull away, make one mistake, and that's their race. And then, once they've made that one mistake, they're like, oh, you know, I can't be bothered anymore. And then they'll just start driving recklessly and trying to try to work them positions up. So hopefully that doesn't happen for the guy on pole today, which I believe will be Paul Godden ahead of class. But so hopefully those two can get away nice and easy. And we've got someone driving around on the circuit. Yeah, John McHutchinson has ventured back in. Um... <laughs> <laughs> he obviously sat there in YouTube chat and thought, do you know what, I do actually want to get involved with this. I'm going back in. I'm going to go and have it. So we, so. so we missed the second race after crashing or whatever happened in the first race, and now we'll be back here for the final race. And I yeah. believe he will start 16th because he was not in the top 15, was he? No, he should start right at the back. I don't think he's going to grab pole because that would just be cheap <laughs> if that was the situation. As the warm-up oh. is coming to the end, we'll bring you up the grid for race number three. Oh, I do love the Scotsman himself, Mr. William Wallace of the SR10s. Had the pleasure of meeting John in real life at a Radical Motorsport event at Silverstone. And uh, let's just say, from what you expect to what you see is not, is completely different. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? You, you, you have this big, burly, six foot two Scotsman image, and you get a little five foot five little one. You know what I mean? It's a completely different <laughs> scenario. It really is. He's five foot five, and there's more fat on a Roman red breast, bless him. But he, he, <laughs> it was so it was so good meeting him. I met Luke Maxwell in real in uh, IRL as well. So um, yeah, very interesting time at the Radical Motorsport event up in Silverstone. Well, last year now August, I think it was went up there. Um, but five minutes is coming to an end. So John, you have to make a decision: going to come and race in race three, or are you going to sit in YouTube chat again? Guess we're gonna well, find it's out. a simple choice, isn't it? And I'm, I'm hoping he picks the right one, which is racing and starting, of course, from the back. And from what I can see, he's got, what, 7,000 I rating. So he's not slow at all, is he, James? He's far from it. No, he, he definitely isn't slow. You can't put that in the same category, but it is Paul Godden <laughs> on pole with David Clasper in second, Chris Barnes in third, Rob Williams in fourth, Edward Parfit in fifth with Dan Lewis in sixth, Dylan DeCosta in seventh, Stuart Gibbons eighth, Wayne Palmer ninth, Luke Maxwell in 10th, Kian Palmer in 11th, Carl Jacklin in 12th, Sam Vanals, Ludovic Jure, Deck Crowther, and the enigma that is John McCutcheonson. I'll say he's going to be here, but we're not entirely sure. Let's see if he is here. He is here. He's on the grid. So go, John, as Paul Godden takes the pole position, and we'll see what happens here for the final race of the evening. Nathan, well, they've absolutely flown by. They have, yeah. The, the first race went very quickly, and that's probably because nothing really happened at the front of the field. Okay. Four lights to go. Five lights to go. Now we're green. Now we're green. And we are green at VRI, VIR North with Paul Godden getting a slow start there. David Clasper coming alongside Chris Barnes in the mix. 
Rob Williams there. Edward Parfit in there as well. Free wide going into turn one. Dylan De Costa, you're either brave or you're incredibly crazy. Taking it free wide in turn one. Williams is in the mix. Barnes is in the mix. Parfit's in the mix. Gibbons, Maxwell, Jacqueline Van Oles. Dan John McCutcheon made up one place over Dan Lewis, who I can't actually see on the grid here. So maybe Dan Lewis isn't in this race, unfortunately for him. But everybody else getting away nice and cleanly. And Paul Goddard taking the whole shot, trying to hang on from Dylan De Costa. Of course, but De Costa here, you could see, got a brilliant start and already looking to get himself ahead of Godden as they head down towards this next couple of corners here. You can see Godden defending the inside line. De Costa breaks later, looks to go around the outside, gets a move done around the outside. Brilliant there from De Costa to take the lead here after only one lap. And he started there, and I believe, in P7. So a brilliant race here from De Costa so far. We can see further back as well. This will be Parvet here looking to make a move on the back of Woolies. We can see as well Jacklet here under pressure from Gibbons as they head round the next couple of corners on behind him is Jaray into contact and that will be Jacqueline and Vanos round and all a big shot there for Jacqueline. oh Jacqueline lost all of his car I'm not too sure Ooh, I don't know who that was in the blade designs it might have been Crowther or Gibbons I think it was Gibbons I think it was yeah Jacqueline's had to jump to the pits but what's that it weren't Crowther it was Gibbo and unfortunately, the contact there put Van Olst and Carl Jacklet into the pits. Jacklet's jumped into the pits now. Chris Barnes is out there with Luke Maxwell. He's just lost that place to Luke. Dylan De Costa taking up the whole shot. Paul Gordon in second. Clasper in third. Parfit in fourth here. Up one place. Luke Maxwell up five. Ludovic Jure up seven. Kian Palmer, Wayne Palmer, Gibbons, Deck Gravel, Rob Williams and John McCutcheonson are all very close together behind that one. They are indeed looking to pull each other along a train around this circuit and all looking to try and feed through and make some moves here in this race here on the board with McCutcheonson here looking to make him move ahead of Rob Williams to put himself in towards P12 here in this race and we can see further ahead the two teammates of Crowther and Gibbons looking to close in here on the back of the two Palmers. City in 8th and ninth position then Jure in P7 looking to catch up to the back of Chris Barnes who's in P6 and of course yet again good start here from De Costa to now lead in this race ahead of Goddard ahead of Clasper as well in P3 and Parfit there in fourth looking to try and gain in and make himself in onto that podium but Maxwell you can see looking to gain in quickly and shouldn't be too long before he can try and fight for P4 here yeah I don't think it's going to be long unfortunately I do love my son of course but he's <laughs> still young and he's not the quickest and Luke Maxwell just seems to be speedy and no matter what car you put him in so for Luke, it's going to be an interesting development. He's going to try and run around the outside. Oh, De Costa. De Costa's... Did he jump the start? I could have done, but as he, how he gained so many positions at the start, didn't he? He was up in, into P3 at turn number one. Yes. Ah, oh, oh, and that's what's happened there to De Costa. Jumped the start completely, didn't he? Went really yeah. early. Yeah, he did. And he had three laps to complete it, and it would have been his, uh, his spot of screaming at him saying, oi, we've got to take it this lap. And he has there, Phil, in YouTube chat, go Mini-Me. Mini-Me's doing his, his uh, well, saying that, what has just happened to Mini-Me? Because he's now off the side. <laughs> oh, blinking Nora. What's he done now? Over the curb he's he goes, runs wide onto the gravel. He's going to miss his breaking point. He ain't stopping that. And then he goes around. How did he end up What's losing? happened here, then? Has he gone wide here? No. They lose all What's of them. he done? Is he done it this next corner here, the right hander? Surely here, somewhere. He's not going to lose the positions out of thin air, is he? he heads into the braking stand. Does he go deep? Oh, he touches that grass, doesn't he? There he goes wide. Yeah, let's hmm. see why. How Maxwell got past him. The Maxwell goes to the left. We saw that. Minimi's on the. Oh, uh, he's slowing down. Slow down. Yeah, I wonder if Minimi got a slow down there, and unfortunately had to try and take it off. Paul Godden's up front with Clasper. Luke Maxwell now in third place, and is chasing him down. Chris Barnes only a second back. He's got the, the Ludovic Jure, who's got two seconds over Kian Palmer, who's well, he's just got everybody else basically. Dylan De Costa yeah. has had a crash and has had to unfortunately jump back to the pits. What did he find himself up to here as he tackles away on VIR? 
does he just call it a day? It looks like he may have done Dylan De Costa. Yeah. And that is his job done. Um, yeah. Oh. Oh, oh. What's up again. Bill, what have you done to mini me? Oh, he's like, gone deep until someone else did. Yeah, Gibbo went off first, and then Mini-Me got, kind of got blinkered and followed him off the side of the circuit. And that's Clasper there going deep. That's going to lay Maxwell through to take second place ahead of Clasper now. Brilliant move there from Maxwell. Clasper defended it and went a little bit too deep in doing so. <laughs> and then we can see further behind as well. Chris Barnes in P4 defending here from Girate for P4. There's a head down in towards this next right-hander here. Brilliant job so far from Barnes, but how long can he keep Jure behind for? I don't think it'll be too long because you can see Jure pushing him through some of these corners, trying to get himself back into the top four battle here. Yeah, Jure is trying to get into the back end of Barnes there. Phil has said, I'm going to stop cheering. Yeah, Jack, <laughs> every time he cheers, it all goes wrong. <laughs> oh, Phil, oh. it's not just you. I think it's a, a bit of a mixture of the old um, curse and, and the skill issue. That might be the problem here. Um, my son will be able to watch that back and go, cheers, Dad, for that. Thank you very much. John <laughs> McGutcherson's gained seven positions. He's now on the back of Gibbons. I think McGutcherson's on a last to wherever he can get to challenge as he comes in, misses, crashes out race one, misses race two, calms down, and then comes back in for race three. So, yeah, you know, that's the way it's <laughs> going to be. Yeah, well, he's had a bit of a break, I suppose. Got, got himself back into the mindset, and they're looking to try and fight for some even more positions. Looking to take PA to eight from Gibbons. Gets himself up the inside. Brilliant move there from John to pop himself up into eighth position. They're looking to close in onto the back of the two Palmers for P6 and P7. And then only another three seconds up the road to Chris Barnes. And then you had the battle between Giray, Clasper, Godden, and Maxwell in the top from what's happened here. Oh, was this path here? Oh, it was a bit was, of contact at turn one. Yeah, it looked like they got a it's little. Like with that. Yeah, a little bit of a, little bit of a rub. And mm -hmm. unfortunately, Crowther then went off. He's lost loads of places. Um, unfortunately for him, John's gained one through Gibbons. He's now coming into the Palmers. He's oh, oh, oh Kian sends Dad wide. That's gonna, Dad's gonna lose a place to McHutchinson, I believe. Unless Wayne can hold the inside line, he doesn't. He gets the inside coming through turn 10. Now McCutchinson's going to go through. Gibbo's going to have a go at Palmer as well, Wayne Palmer. And now young Kean has got the ever-looming Scotsman coming at him here as Gibbo and Palmer still continue to fight it out. A little bit of ding-donging, a little bit of ding-donging, and a little bit of jure is ding-donging up front. But Chris Barnes trying to get onto the back. Clasper, Godden, and Maxwell up nine places from 10th straight into first place. And we're not even in the second half of the race. Yeah, it'll be looking like, what, is it 101 points or something here for Maxwell tonight? Brilliant job so far um, in this first round and still leading ahead of Godden, ahead of Clasper, and Giray in P4. Barnes looking to try and make him move as well to get himself in towards that top four. And now... Palmer, Hutchison, Par uh, the other Palmer will be looking to try and gain in here to the back of Chris Barnes and try and fight for that top five. But the issue they got is they got a 3.2 second gap to build up here. So a lot of work is needed to be done by those sixth down to try and catch up to those ahead. But hopefully if those from second to fifth battle, they can try and bring them a little bit closer. You can see Barnes going a little bit too deep, losing nearly a second there from the back of Jure, who's on the back of Clasper. And then Godden's nearly lost that one second gap. He's a Maxwell for the lead. Yeah, Godden hanging on to that second place. Clasper's new into the series this evening. He's trying to stay with the front guys as well. David Clasper there. Ludovic Jure behind. Chris Barnes behind that. Kian Palmer coming up over the hill. He's got the Scotsman behind him. Closing him down. The cost is into the pits. Crowver and Van Olst are having a light little ding dong down the back end. Van Olst has cleared Crowver, but I don't think Crowver will quite give it up. And unfortunately for Clasper and Jure. Oh, Jure does uh. sit there and wait. But unfortunately for David Clasper, he's all the way down now oh. in a place. Given sweeps around the outside, we can have a look back, see on that one. Jure, that was. Oof. Dude. A little bit naughty. Very, yeah. very late, I think, on that one. Well, yeah, indeed, and Clasper. He's not had it good today, has he? he? He had two crashes in the first race, which dropped him down to the back. Now, he's had another crash, and this time dropped him down to P8. It's not been too good here for uh, Clasper so far. We can see, though, Parfit under more pressure, this time from Williams into turn one. You can see that. 
Edward defends the outside line well, and Jure, I presume, will have a lot of damage on his car, so we should see part of it and Williams pass quite soon as they head through the first set to once again. We can see further ahead there, clasped up on the back of Gibbons there. I'm sure he'll be losing time due to damage, and half it's still defending here from the back of Williams as they head through in towards turn three and towards turns four and number five. Hutchison on the back of Palmer here for P4. So he's doing a brilliant job, uh, McCutcheon. So started in last position now, looking to get himself into the top four. Yeah, he, he wears his heart on his sleeve, as old John, and, and you know, and that's the way he always has been. Claspin's now going to take the inside. Gibbons, wow, dude, you gave him like a bunch of room there. <laughs> That was just insurmountable amount of room. He has got the run out, mind you. Claspers jeopardised his exit. Is he going to be able to run side by side? Does go through Claspers. So well done. A little bit Jure sticking his nose up in a half beating up Cleo with no front end creating his own aerodynamics. Dropping him through the roller coaster, the right hander. Now he's squeezing Gibbons. Gibbons is not going to give it up. Jure did manage to muscle his way through, but Jure's off the side of the circuit. That's going to allow Gibbons to come through. Gibbo's going to run wide out of hog pen that's going to release Parfit. now he's going to have williams coming alongside him here as well as von holst is in there Crowther's in there it's all turning into a right little six car ding dong at the back here and it is led by jure Parfit behind von holst williams Crowther. they're all going to be looking at sending it free wide coming down into turn one is it going to happen is it going to not is williams no oh. von holst and Crowther. Yep, Crowther once again breaking two late at turn one and this time taking um, Vanos with him into turn one. Oh, a little bit too late there and I think that's what happened early on with Edward Parfit down at turn one and that mm. obviously that time it was someone else going a little bit too deep and taking to the grass and that obviously that's when it was Crowther and Vanos. What we can see here, McCutcheon on the back of Key and Palmer. Brilliant defence so far from Palmer here. His dad down in where is he P6 so I'm sure he's not going to be too happy losing it to his son again once in this race. And oh, the fact that you put probably a get on long. the end of it, rubbing the salt in the wounds <laughs> there, Mr. Richards. <laughs> well, you can't just sugarcoat it, can you? You've got to tell the whole truth. You've got to deceive um, way here. Yeah, the oh. whole truth and nothing but the truth has helped me, God. <laughs> and that's what we've just done there, unfortunately for Wayne, cementing it, rubbing it in your open wounds of seeing your son fight it out with John McCutcheonson. So let's see how these guys continue to get on and how they fight up through. Is Kian going to hold on? We know John's quicker. He is quicker. He will be quicker. And now he's going to run around the outside. I think he's going to get this one done here as we're going into the last seven minutes. Kian on the left for the JBB Esports. John McCutcheonson on the right for the Team Radline. It's going to be a straight drag. 180 horses behind each of these Cleos. It weighs less than about 1,000 kilograms. It is literally a roller skate on four wheels. McCutcheonson's gone on deep. That's allowed Kian Palmer to come through. And that was all on John McHutchinson's own doing there as he goes off the side of the circuit. Yep, and brilliant pressure being put on McHutchinson from Palmer, and obviously Wayne Palmer there looking to make him move ahead of McHutchinson to put himself into P5, and we'll see what he can do here. Look, if he can try and make it a Palmer 4 or 5 here in this race, and Kian, obviously despite having all that battling at turn one, has gained into the back of Chris Barnes. That kept now just 2.7 seconds here in this race. And Maxwell yet again at the front has led by 4.2 seconds here tonight. As we can see, yet again Palmer looking to find a way through, but just can't get himself ahead of McCutcheon just yet in this race. Looking to gain in. You can see they're just following in the tracks of him. He's going to look to put up the inside. That's the back eight. Couldn't quite get it done there, but I'm sure he will be looking to get the move done quite soon. I'm not sure if McCutcheon there has heated up his tyres a little bit too much and overheated them, because you can see Palmer a lot more pace being carried through here. Yeah, he has. He has got a lot more, but whether or not McCutcheon's going to be able to come back at him and allow Kian... Well, I don't think he's going to give Kian that place. I think Kian's going to have to work absolutely insurmountably hard for that place to keep hold of it because John is quick, he's no slouch. They're coming over the line now, breaking into the final five minutes. And John McCutcheonson behind Kian Palmer, behind Chris Barnes, behind Paul Godden, who's doing a massive, exceptional job holding on to that second place overall for Paul. So great lift for him. And now, oh, Kian, you're going to have the inside line. Are you going to send it in with him? 
you are. You're going to go. You're going to get the inside through NASCAR. What about going up through left hook? Kian's gone a little bit wide. That's going to open the door for John McHutchinson. Oh, Kian, you kind of rolled over and got your belly tickled. Yep, he went a little bit too deep there defending from McCutcheon. and it's not the first time we've seen someone do that at that corner there. It's a very difficult corner to go around the other side and defend from and now we can see Keen under pressure from his dad Wayne as they head in towards his next uphill right hand up and no move can be made there from the two Palmers. They still sit in P5 and P6 and yet again McCutcheon there making a mistake and allowing Keen to close back up here to try and get a move back again for P4 here in this race looking to gain in here on the back of McCutcheon who's done a brilliant job remember starting 16th now up into P4 so 12 positions gained here over 15 minutes which is roughly a position a minute here oh. as that's Casper going very deep there in towards the right hand I'm not sure what's happened to him but unless he came to contact with Jure he's just gone no. very very deep there I missed it just completely misses it doesn't Oof. get the car stopped right over yeah doesn't get it rotated and unfortunately he's now just turned the Clio into a nice little lawnmower there Ooh. oh he does get out oh, of the way it. well done yeah Clasper does get the rejoin under control um palmer and palmer there you go <laughs> so it's like a, it, a yeah, yeah it's like that 80s tv show isn't it um heart to heart do you, do you remember that I was born in 2004, James. I'm a little bit too late for that. Oh, heart <laughs> to heart. 20 years too late. Yeah, a big mellow family drama. It was quite interesting. Go Dex, says SRL. Um, probably guessing that might be JB this time of night. Uh, unfortunately, Dex out. He won race two, mind you. Um, and as him and Sam Van Holst have had a little bit of contact after that. So, unfortunately for Dex, we've lost Dex. And he's out, out of this one. Ian Palmer holding on from Dad, is Dad getting how much grit? How much pressure would you put on your son in a race? Mm, if it was me, a lot. Because yeah. I want to win. Yeah. You wouldn't want to lose money or never mind your son who's meant to be, you know, theoretically worse than you. I'd love to. Maybe I'll jump into the Cleos next week and give me son a bit of grief. <laughs> That'd be quite funny. The question is, it? though, are you good at the game, though, James? Give me about a week and every day practicing. <laughs> I'm all right. You know, I'll be, I'll be able to match his pace. It'll be fine. We're allowed driver aid, so I'll have to have the driver line on because I won't have time to practice. <laughs> <laughs> hey, everything you say about that, right? Every person I've watched in F123 at the moment, regardless of skill level, they've all had the blinking driver line on. So if it's good enough for that well, esports scene, it's good enough for this one. I can't say much myself. I do use the driver line. But in our race, and I can't use it. No, I can't. In our race, and it's not realistic. But in F1, I can't not use it. It shows the realism of the games, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, but F1, <laughs> I think F1 uh, is a progressive yes. driver line, isn't it? it yeah, know, yeah. As you start braking, it tells you you can start getting on the front mm -hmm. and stuff yeah. like that. In I racing, it's just start, stop, lift, start, stop, Ooh. lift. And that's it. It doesn't do anything else. As Kian goes wide there, that's going to allow Dad to close right back up. So it's a very start, stop, lift, start, stop, lift driver line. It's not a progressive yeah. right. You can Now you brake, you can get on the accelerator. It's like you've got to brake, you've got to run, then you can go green. So Yeah, I can't, uh, I can't see it being too well. No. Uh, Phil there, it's not a game. Phil, we've been through this multiple times. <laughs> it is. This, is. this is a simulator. It's not. It's it's not it, what is it it's just a, you jump on you drive around a, a track as you do in f1 it's just a game isn't it? it's acc is a game they're all games phil i'm, I'm sorry you, you can't ever realistically get the realism into a game that you're trying to get out of real life just never gonna work true it ain't yeah I've heard the wet is good, but not realistic at all. But then again, how can you, how can you put weather into a game? It's not possible. I still don't know how to make this game as realistic as it is. You know, we, I think it's a brilliant, brilliant game, isn't it? Yeah. As we can see there, McCutcheon under pressure from Chris Barnes into P3. Goes McCutcheon to the inside, goes Barnes, looks to break later. And McCutcheon there, covering the move off. Brilliant here from McCutcheon, last to P3. Final He'll be lap. enjoying that one. Maybe maybe he should have stayed here for the for the last race. Yeah, final lap of the race. Now, is Godden going to be able to hang on? That's going to be the, the thing. Is Godden be able to hang on here to take this victory? 
Wardy the Gonna Weird it said it's a real realistic simulation game. I <laughs> agree. There you go. That'll do. Let's put it under the um, R RSG category if anybody asks. And they go, what's that? You can say it's a realistic simulation game. Weirdy, I agree with you, buddy. Well done. Welcome in as well. Thank you so much for joining us. But yeah, um, yeah, for me, you know, it's a game. Like Call of Duty is a game. Fortnite is a game. They're all games. I jump on, I play for a bit, and then I come off again. And, and that's it. That's for me as well. It's classed as a... Is that JB or Dan Mole? Who's got hold of the SRTV account this evening? <laughs> Which one are you? Let's have a note. Let's go at it. But uh, Luke Maxwell is just wrapped up his second win in a row. Almost made up for last week, Luke. I, we gave you two wins. How about that? You know what I mean? Come on, fair play. As he goes over the line, Paul Godden is going to take that second place with John McCutcheonson going to come over the line in third, then Chris Barnes, then Wayne Palmer, uh, Kian Palmer, then Wayne Palmer, then Jure with half a car, Edward Parfit with David Clasper. Don't run to the end, mate. Your, the line's all the way down here. Keep going, bud. Keep going. <laughs> there you go. As it comes over the line, Sam Vidal's does complete again with half a car. Stu Givens and Rob Williams come over the line. I do love people who weave down the straight and they're not even over the finishing line yet. Yeah, it's a long run, isn't it, to the final yeah. um, line here. If Clasper wasn't nice and wanted to sit up behind him there, he would have had a go at him. I would have had a go at him. But here is the results <laughs> here. Luke Maxwell is your winner with Paul Gollan in second, John McCurchison in third. Chris Barnes in fourth with Kieran Palmer and Wayne Palmer in fifth and sixth. Vladimir Jure in seventh. Edward Parfit in eighth. David Clasper in ninth. Sam Vidalst in tenth. Stuart Gibbons in eleventh. Rob Williams in twelfth with Deck Craver, Dylan DaCosta, Carl Jacklett, and Dan Lewis. There are Sims, Simcades, and Arcades. This is classed as a Sim. Yeah. Hmm. I will have to agree to disagree, oh. James, says Phil. Oh, I'd say it's a simulator more than a game. Now, don't shoot me. I'm not going to shoot you. Why am I going to shoot you? Your opinion is your opinion, right? At the end of the day, that's a fair enough one. I. Okay, so does it make Call of Duty a first-person simulator? Because I go in there and I pretend no. I'm in the army. Why? They're not realistic, though, are they? Well, they are. I shoot people. And if I go into hardcore, <laughs> hardcore mode, I get in with one bullet. So why is uh, it? Is, well. Okay, so is Fortnite a, a first-person simulator? No, because it's not in first person. Well, all right, is it's it? a third person. No, it's a third person simulator. <laughs> but Call of Duty is first person. Does make Call of Duty a third person, first person simulator then? Because I can go in, I can attach weapons that I can do in the army, and, and I can shoot people like I can in the army. And there's also a now, I know you said I'm talking silly, but also you can now get a machine and you can put little bottles of smells in it and it will blow smells at you <laughs> from, from um, like bullet fire and gunpowder and tire screeching. I saw that the other day. Get one of them. That would definitely sort it out. Uh, there we go. Oh, oh I don't know. Do anything. It's all, um, yeah, a bit chaotic. We're just what a night of racing we've had. Yeah, we've had a great night of racing. Let's see if anybody wants to come in for a chat. I knew he would. We'll have a chat with Luke here because I better bring him in. I'll get, make up for him, unfortunately, losing out last week. Poor old Luke. Um, but he's done a great job here. He's taken a victory. Let's have a chat to Mr. Luke Maxwell here, <laughs> who's jumped in with us. Luke, welcome in, buddy. How are you? Not too bad, yeah, yeah. All right, thank you. Yeah, results count this week. <laughs> yes, they, I knew. See, I told you. I, I said. I said at the top of the show, Luke, that you weren't happy with me because of the results. But yes, the results will. I'm count. happy now, James. Yeah, that's all right. It was good. Good. Good results tonight. Well, I'm glad it worked out for you, buddy. Two victories. <laughs> Race two was a little bit interesting for you, though. Yes. Well, I think the move was a bit uh, aggressive and. Um... I don't think it was on, to be fair, going three wide down there. And, of course, I came off worse because used as the brakes. That's what happens. It? So, uh, yeah, but, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's Cleo's. So, it's what you got to get. You're learning that now, are you? The improvement from the first I, I season have, yeah, to now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just, just thought that, you know, it was a very ambitious move. I was late on the brakes there anyway. So, uh, yeah, but, uh, you know, it, it, in the end, with a, with a damaged car, I managed to get back up to seventh. So, uh, Seven was it or six? Yeah. So uh, you know, all in all, I was, I was quite surprised. Yeah, you know, please, I managed to keep going. To be fair, and uh, 
yeah, all, all round a good result for the night. So, yeah, happy days. Good yeah. result for the team. Good result for, for me. Well, a good result now, John. Come back. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. To have a race off. <laughs> yeah. He, he, he had to go calm down, did the Scotsman. Get a, a quick dram yes. for his own troubles. Yeah. There was, uh, yeah, was steam, steam coming out of those Scottish ears, I think. So, oh, uh, yeah. I can he's, imagine. He, he's in the rating room out here to have a chat with you. So, oh, uh, no. I'm, yeah. I'm a bit fearful. Let him, let him <laughs> I, don't, I don't really know if I want to bring him in, to be honest. Uh, I, I suppose the good thing is I can end on the calming feature. Luke, one question before we get your shout outs there, buddy. Is I racing a simulator or a game? Simulator. Damn you. 100%. There we are, James. Told you. Yep. Yeah, just because yeah. Luke Maxwell says it doesn't mean it's... <laughs> well, if I tell my mates I'm playing on my game, my driving game, mm. and they just take the mick, right? If I tell them I'm in a professional-grade racing simulator, they just take the mick. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> so either way, Luke, they take the mick. But anyone you want to shout yes, out, buddy, yeah. before we let you go? Uh, give a shout out to John. Yeah, good, good comeback there, mate, in the last race. So, uh, yeah, well played, and uh, and all the drivers today. You know, it's tough racing, and we all get a bit, uh, you know, red red mist in the races there, and and so on. But um, yeah, as long as we keep keep the racing fair throughout the season, I think I think everyone's good, and you got to expect the odd the odd thing here and there. Yeah, yeah, we're bringing in. It's the change when you get that driver rotation, isn't it? You're never going to hang on to everybody all the way through. So. Yeah, yeah, let's yeah. see what happens. I really do not want to bring John in, to be honest. But Luke, thank you very much. Go so on, go I'm on, go, be good. I'm, I'm, he, promised, he promised not to swear. He said. Yeah, right. <laughs> oh, mate, you take care. Have a good one. I'll see you Thursday, buddy. Cheers, boys. See you later. Yeah, mate. All right, here he is now. The man himself took a break this evening, which I've never, ever seen before. Um, between having an incident in race one, calming down in race two. And then coming back for race three and taking a podium. So, all in all, I'm hoping he's happy. But let's see how we go. John, welcome in, bud. How are you? Yeah, I'm okay, James. Kind of a <laughs> mixed, mixed emotions about tonight. But I hope. <laughs> red, red flag to a ball, I, I gathered. And, and, and it, it happens, no, I, John. I did, I did the third race for Luke because we're in it as a team. So, I thought it's not fair and lucky either just to, to spit the dummy out. Um, so we'll come back on. And you did a you did a good job, mate. Moved your way through the field cleanly, no incidents, and away you go. No, if, if the guys keep the racing clean, that'll happen, you know. But some guys don't want to race clean, so we'll see. We will. Some so don't or can't, you know. I don't know what it is. If they don't or can't, you know, there's a difference, a big difference. Yeah, there is, and, and it was expected um, to see. It, you know, it was expected. I think that's the thing. When you're bringing in new drivers, we know we get that rotation every single month. The first couple of rounds are all a little bit um, feisty, aren't they? They they always have been every season we've done the Clios. Yeah, I don't mind feisty. You know, that, that's fair enough. But, you know, a bit of patience. You know, that's all I'm asking for. The guys are faster. If they're faster, they'll get by. Simple as that. You know, I've been faster in many races and just wait till I take the patience and you'll get by. Look, the third race tonight yeah. wasn't the fastest, but you know, a bit of patience, you'll get around them. Yeah. But you, okay. did, you did do a fabulous job, John. You, you did really well. Anyway, James, how are you doing, mate? I'm all right, mate. I've had a, it's just the, the, I've, we've had a conversation on YouTube about whether or not iRacing is a simulator or a game. Um, Luke mm-hmm. said it's a simulator. What did you What do you think? <laughs> I know what you think. Uh, I think as well. That's the problem. They're games, aren't they? They're games, aren't you they? know. It's of course they're games. See, uh, that... but it's a simulating game. <laughs> How's that sound? Well, we had um, Wardy in YouTube chat called it. It's a realistic simulation game. So an RSD. Yeah, that's fair enough. That sounds like a good description. Absolutely. But at the end of the day, we're not getting paid for it, so it's it's a game. John, I'm now falling in love with you once more, dear sir. Anyone you want to shout out <laughs> before we let you go? <laughs> I shall show it to you guys for all the hard work you've put in to get this league going. So well done, boys. Well, well, John, thank you so much for that one, buddy. I look forward to seeing how you get on for the rest of the season. Okay, thanks, James. Yes, one apiece. Let's go with Paul Goddard. <laughs> Here in now, the man himself, he took second place in race three. Race one and two. Had a bit of a roller coaster. Paul, welcome in, buddy. How are you? How are you? 
Yeah, evening, guys. I'm good, thanks. Okay. Yeah, that was a bit of an interesting, <laughs> uh, interesting uh, race evening. Oh, the first race one and two was last and last. And then uh, when I realised I was on uh, a pole for race three, I thought I'd come in a, a lap early and try and watch some laps to see what I'm doing wrong. And I just had no brakes tonight at all. I said, I was saying to the guys, I don't know if it's like I've been running the uh, LMP2 car in the wet for a week and a half and I'm not pushing the brake pedal hard enough or what, but I just, I could brake in so early and I was still locking up. So it's really frustrating, but it was good fun. I was having really good battles throughout the field. At the back of the field, we had some really good battles. At the front of the field, that was I was just trying to keep clean. And when Luke and John were bearing down on us, Luke got past just quite easily, and he was like second and a half lap quicker, so he was gone. And then uh, John, I thought was going to catch us at the end, but I just managed to keep it clean and tidy with no mistakes and, uh, and get a second place, which was good considering how the rest of the evening's been. Yeah, we've just had that conversation. You know, we've, we've John had an incident in race one. He went away, he calmed down, he had a little dram, and then he came back for race three. You know, we, I think, to be honest, we always expect the first few rounds of a new season with new drivers to be a little bit rough, right? And and it's been the same for the Clio since the beginning. Yeah, it's it's a part of Clio racing. I think it's um, it's one thing I was trying to explain to um, Kian because he can be uh, quite um, hot headed sometimes. No I'm way. That, yeah, I said you just need to be calm, and it takes in the Clios. It's yeah, it, you've got to stay calm because if you don't stay calm, you get so annoyed with yourself, and you end up making a mistake and running into someone or or just losing it and losing many places, but. Um, it's part of the Clio is just to be rubbing and racing. And what I saw last, like tonight, wasn't too bad. There was, like, even in uh, the lap one, I think it was of the first race, there was a couple of cars sideways and then got punted. But that's, you know, it's part of a new season and everyone's mm-hmm. learning who to race with and what to go, if you need to go for it straight away and stuff like that. But overall, I think the driving looked pretty good from what I saw. So there was just the usual, uh, uh, bit of contact here and there but this track is really hard as well like to to drive and overtake on and actually like race it's good fun to drive around but to race on is very like difficult so you've got to stick the nose up there and hope that the other car is going to give you just that little bit of space because and if you're not you're on the grass here that's it you're off and mm. yeah you're not coming back on at least you've got a bit more grip on the new grass model but yeah you're, you're still a long way off and with only a, 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 a smaller grid you're at the back of the grid before you know it, and that's it. Once you've lost the pack, it's uh, pretty much game over. Yeah, but you battled yourself back in the third race. Did you worry that John was going to get you? Because he was close at the end. Yeah, I thought he was going to get me. I could see um, him battling with Chris in the background, and I was like, right, just concentrate, hit the apexes, try and do like a, about a second a lap slower than uh, Luke. So I thought I can keep that pace going. And then uh, I thought if he can have a little battle with Chris, he dropped back a bit. And then once he got past Chris, I was like, yeah, he's going to catch me in two or three laps. And I was like, just keep it clean, keep it clean. And another lap, he would have had me into turn one, I think. So he was uh, bearing down a lot quicker. And yeah, because he had, he certainly had, uh, I said I was breaking so early into turn one. Luke was like, all I had to do is go one way, then the other. And I knew that you were going to outbreak yourself. <laughs> so it's uh it was, yeah, it's just a bit frustrating that, but hopefully we can uh, reset and go again next week and see how we go. But with that second place, it meant the evening wasn't a complete disaster. So, yeah, it wasn't. And uh, we're off to the fabulous Laguna Seca, the corkscrew. Um, well, that's going to cause an interesting thing, I think. We'll see it all there as well. But Paul, thank you so much for joining us, there, buddy. Anyone you want to shout out before we let you go? Yeah, shout out to um, uh, Chris Barnes. I had some really good racing with him this evening. And uh, I locked up on, uh, again, into turn one and uh, managed to try and get it. I was pumping the brake and I think I clipped him, but he was uh, he was okay with it. But yeah, we had some really good battling and I see him finishing fourth there as well. So it was a, a good result for Chris as well. So, because we were had, battling at the back of the grid all night. So, yeah. And uh, thanks you guys as well for putting on the league and... Uh, making it a for everyone to come and enjoy themselves and hopefully over the next few rounds we get some good racing and uh, maybe some new drivers turn up as well which would be great 
Yeah, I'm sure it will. But Paul, thank you so much for joining us there, buddy. And we we'll look forward to seeing how you get on in the next race. Yeah, nice. Cheers, guys. Oh, we got the last but not least here. Must have missed him here in the waiting room. Mr. Ludovic Jure. Ludovic, welcome in, buddy. How are you? I'm fine. I'm fine. Just a bit tired of the, of the races, but uh, I'm okay. Tired as in because you've worked hard, or I'm hoping that is the case? Yeah, I work hard. <laughs> it was a tough one, wasn't it? Got caught up in a few little incidents and accidents tonight as well. Um, bit of a tough one on the racing out there this week. Yeah, on race three, um, I just lock up my my wheels, as you can see on the on the screen. Yeah. Uh, I I apologize myself, and uh, when I was in the grass, I was waiting for him to to pass by and uh, just to to apologize, and then um, it just um, messed up and uh, I passed him and uh, he finished my race and uh, for the, the first race uh, it was hard mm. uh, a lot of battles uh, close and tough um, but it was fun uh, like the the first one uh, when I was followed uh, Dylan Da Costa my teammates mm. and uh, we, we we knew the, the good the track uh, because uh, we raced on the um, official races this week and um, we thought uh, that we could do p1 and p2 but uh, unfortunately he was blocked uh, on the uh, start and then uh, he just uh, hit it, his wheels so he couldn't uh, close to to look mm. the race he was a little bit naughty in race three, did Mr. Lacoste. So he jumped the start there, unfortunately for him. But for you going forward, two podiums here, a third and a second. Just to win next week at Laguna Seca then, give you a full house. <laughs> we'll try, we'll try. Well, we'll come uh, stronger with Dylan. He, he, will, uh, he will train, I will uh, force him to train and uh, <laughs> to be... Uh, Calm uh, when he raced, and uh, it will be okay. And uh, we will have a win, both of us. Well, okay, I look forward to that one there, Ludovic. Anyone you want to shout out, buddy, before we let you go? Yeah, maybe thanks to to you to um, to broadcast the race. Uh, it's always nice to to share uh, the same patience. Uh, thanks to you, uh, our teammates on the Virtual Driver by TX3 can uh, look the stream and uh, enjoy the races. So thanks for that. And uh, yeah, the, the level is pretty good, uh, but uh, sometimes uh, some guys have to, to look at the mirrors. Mm. <laughs> That, that seems to be the theme. I think we'll have a little chat before next week, before we get going. I think I'll come in. and it's like uh, a racing. Yeah. 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 <laughs> give, you, give you all a little bit of a pep talk to help you out there, buddy. But thank you, Ludovic, <laughs> for joining us, mate. And we look forward to seeing how you yeah. get on for the rest of the season. Have a nice evening, guys. Take care, mate. I think the the thing is with that one, and it's always the same when you put new mm. drivers together. You know, we had it in the very first season of Clio's. Mind you, the very first season of Clio's, we had 40 drivers. So yeah. you can imagine, it Love. was chaotic. Yeah. And, and <laughs> you know, we had to say to everybody, look, it's going to happen. Calm down. We just brought 40 drivers together yeah. from multiple different communities. Mm -hmm. You're going to have that thing. And I think we get it every beginning of the, of the Clio season. It's no surprise, really, in the Clio's because they are quite little, bumpy, small, mini TCRs yeah. as such. Well, I think in any racing series, you know, you, you're more likely going to be scratching your head if there's no contact than there, you know, than there, if there is contact because it's racing. There's going to be contacts all the time, no, no matter what car you're in. It is what it is, and sometimes it doesn't end too well. Sometimes you can get away with it. We saw a few drivers today get away with a few incidents, but sometimes you end up in the wall or you end up going round. And I suppose that's just part of it. But a good thing about this circuit is there's you're not too close to a wall apart from a couple of parts of the track. So if you go off. Generally, you can save yourself and continue. Obviously, for DaCosta, you know, even though we went off at full speed, he didn't hit that wall on the outside. Yeah, he, he didn't. The grass, you know, the new depth has kind of helped him and he, he managed to survive a little bit. But I think, you know, 
if this is what we're going to get for the start of the season, I think this could be an absolutely oh. incredible, as, as well as people jiggling around, uh, you know, the progressive scoring system now. It's not just pro and ams. There's no pro and ams. Anybody can win. Yeah. Kralva took a win tonight. Jure took two podiums. Van Ols was up there. McCutcheson was up there. Paul Godden was up there. So I think going forward, it's going to be an absolutely epic season here as well. And I didn't ask Paul Godden if it was a game or a sim. So at the moment, it's one apiece. Game from John McCutcheson, sim from Luke Maxwell. John's got a 7K I rating. Luke's got a 4.6. I'm going with John. He's got more I rating. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. It is a game. <laughs> or we could call it a realistic simulation game, says Wardy in the YouTube chat. But for what? now, guys, yeah, it does, doesn't it? It's going to wrap it up for now. Thank you so much for joining myself up here in the booth. I've been James Parfit alongside Nathan Richards here for the Renault Clio opening round one from VIR. Join us next week as we head to the dusty lands of Laguna Seca. Don't forget, like, subscribe, turn on the bells. There's a lot more racing coming up on the JBB YouTube channel as well. We've got uh, UK Sim Racing coming up tomorrow night. They return as well in the little MX-5s. They're going from Bar first. We've got the BSC from Richmond Raceway. We've got the GT4s from Nürburgring. We've got Radical Race Series from Road Atlanta. Friday, we've got a day off at the moment, but then join us for the VWSC Historics 1964. They're going around a race I've never heard of, which is Targo Florio, and the race lap times, check this out, between 37 to 42 minutes long, and they're Oof. only doing three laps. So join us for that one, because we're going to need as much interaction there as possible on that. But thank you so much, guys. And as always, from us up here in the JBB booth, take care, have a great week, and you never know, we might see you on the track sometime. Good night.